Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, it's time to check out the sed command, the stream editor itself. Sed is an awesome command, but it's often considered a little hard to use, but it's really not. In this video, I'm going to give you some examples. And sed is something you should learn anyway, because anytime you need to find and replace text in files, it's an awesome command for that purpose, among many other purposes. So let's go ahead and explore the sed command. So let's take a look at a few examples of the sed command. And I have this example text file right here that I'm going to use as the sample file for this tutorial. Inside that file, I have three email addresses, Billy, Tom, and Jay at example.org. It's a pretty simple example, but it works. Now let's say, for example, that I want to change every occurrence of example.org to example.com, but only if the user is Billy or Tom. Now obviously, I could just edit this file, and I could do that pretty quick. But if there were a few hundred lines that I wanted to edit, then that would take me quite a while. But sed is great because it allows us to transform text in one shot and make substitutions very easily. So I'll bring up a sample command. I'll just paste it right here. Now, this command wrapped a little bit due to the font size of my terminal, but let's actually explore what we're doing with this command. Now, first of all, we have the sed command itself. Now, notice that I didn't actually show you how to install sed because it's already included on all Linode images, so you already have it. The dash i option here allows it to perform modifications in place. The dash r option forces sed to use the extended regular expression syntax. Regular expressions are outside the scope of this video, but you shouldn't have to have a firm understanding of them to know exactly what's going on because I'm going to explain the concepts that matter for the examples that I'm going to give you, including this one. Now, in single quotes, we have the entirety of the find and replace operation there. So what we want to do is a substitution. And we have a caret symbol there, and that refers to the beginning of the line. So if we did have a match, but there is a space in front, then it's not actually a match. What we're searching for here is either Billy or Tom at starexample.org. Now, if you recall, there were three lines in that file. I put a line there for J as well, but I'm not looking for that line. I'm only looking for lines that begin with either Billy or Tom and it has to end with example.org. And what I want to do is change each occurrence. That's what the one is. One is for each occurrence. It's like a placeholder. I want to change all of those lines where it shows example.org to example.com, but again, only if it matches Billy or Tom, and that match starts at the beginning of the line. So I'll press Enter, and I'll cut out the file. Now here we can see that the first two lines are different. We have Billy at example.com and Tom at example.com. And those lines used to read example.org and to prove it, I actually created a backup of that file off camera. And there's the original. You can see that I had example.org on every line. But my example said command matched the first two lines there, Billy and Tom at example.org and change those over to example.com. But I wasn't looking for J. I wasn't looking for any line that began with that, so it left that line alone. Now what I'm going to do is reset the example. And those two files are the same, the original and the backup. And I'll recall the previous command, we're going to do this a little bit differently because you might not want to actually replace the input file. Perhaps you want the input file and the output file to be separate. So you want the file coming in to give you the lines that need to be modified, but then you want the output to not be saved over the original, but instead saved to a new file. So at the very beginning here, I could use cat, and the file name is roster.txt. And then I'll pipe that into the sed command. I'm going to take off the dash i. 
and that's because I don't want to do a replacement in place. Again, I want this to go to an output file. And I'm going to change the end as well because this was the input file, but it's not anymore. I'm going to instead redirect the output. And I'm going to save the output to roster underscore modified.txt. So if this command works, the original roster.txt should not be changed, but the changes should actually be in the output file instead. Let's see what happens. Well, it didn't error at least, so that's a good sign. And the roster.txt file, just like I wanted, has not been modified. And let's see what's inside this file. We have the same contents as the original file, but we can see that the first two lines have been modified, which were the exact same changes as before, it's just that now the changes are in a separate file. And here's our original command again. This one did actually replace the original file. But I'm going to simplify this a little bit because I want to do a more simplistic replacement. I'm actually going to remove most of this right here. So I'm going to look for Billy pretty much anywhere, not specifically at the beginning of the line. And I'm going to change that name over to Joe. Why not? Simple enough. So I'm doing a very simple replacement here. I'm looking for one word, and I want to replace that same word with a different word. And as you can see, it did exactly what I asked it to do. But going a little bit further, though, I was to open that up in an editor. I'll change that line back. But what I'm going to do is just add a bunch of spaces for some reason to make it a little bit different. I'll put it again there and again there. So not very practical, but it'll serve as a good example. And what I'm going to do is run that sed command yet again. And now I will cut out the contents. And as you can see, it looked for every occurrence of Billy and changed it to Joe because I didn't have the caret at the beginning, it didn't matter where the occurrence actually was. Every time it saw that string, it replaced it in place because again, I had the dash I option right there in the command. The documentation page for this video has even more examples of said that you can use that'll allow you to extend your knowledge even further. So I recommend that you give that a quick check, but I think that the examples that I've gone over in this video will at least give you the basics of using the sed command, and you should be able to use it right now to replace text anytime you need to do so. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video, and that you now know the basics of sed. Sed is awesome, and it only gets better from here because the more you get accustomed to it, the more powerful it becomes. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so, and we will be back very soon with some new content. Thanks for watching.